Hello and welcome along to another episode of this FM19 story, The Head Coach with me, Daniel. It's season 13, episode 1, and you can see we're currently unemployed. After completing the domestic double at Napoli, we've resigned from that job, and today we're back to accept a new job offer as we move along to another new country. But firstly, before we find out which club we're going to be managing next season, a massive thank you to everyone that continues to follow the series. We've got loads of new content on the channel, which I really hope you're enjoying. These two long-term FM19 stories continue for the foreseeable future as we start with our new club in the head coach and continue our Premier League progress with Torquay in our one club series part of the furniture. Our brand new Cricket19 career mode series started on Saturday after a really enjoyable Ashes test playthrough over the last few weeks and we're also continuing our Snooker19 career so a massive thank you for everyone that's followed any of those series. I really hope you continue to enjoy them and if you are new to the channel then do subscribe for all of that content content as it'll be continuing on the channel for the foreseeable future. If you're looking forward to our big move and seeing us at another new club too, do put a thumbs up on the video. Hopefully you'll enjoy the new club we're managing as we've got a big season in store from this one. So we'll go and have a look at that job offer in a moment, but we just want to give you a quick update on how we're getting on. I'm going to go to our profile and hope it doesn't ruin it. I don't think it does at the moment. To look at our career milestones to see how we've been getting on and just how many competitions we've won in the time that we've been going. So obviously we had a pretty barren spell at the start of our career two sackings in a row we did well at Slough and Stevenage but again no titles just a playoff win at Stevenage and then at Barnsley we were top of the league but left midway through the season but at Newcastle it all started to go well just so you can reflect on the jobs we're trying to get now and how well we've been doing in the last three or four years trying to add some trophies to the cabinet so the first one was our Carabao Cup win with Newcastle that was in 2027 and in the following season in 2028 did we manage to win anything there we did we won the Europa League in 2028 Esri Conza with the winner in that one then the following year we won the Community Shield at the start of the season the European Super Cup obviously because we won the Europa League and then later in the season that year we obviously won the Premier League that was the end of our time at Newcastle we did lose in the FA Cup final but we're not going to mention Bernard Martin again he did feature this season with Napoli though as we won both the Italian Cup and Serie A in a quite remarkable first season abroad where we really had some quite brilliant success but now we're going on to another new country unfortunately we didn't get the Leipzig job and no other jobs in Spain and Germany have become available in the top half of the divisions it's just a bit of a weird summer really all of the teams performed as they were expected there were no surprises in the league the only one that really underperformed at a big club and ended up getting the sack was the Juventus manager and we're not staying in Italy especially not after they rejected us last summer but let's go to the inbox and see who we're moving to you know it's going to be out of France or Portugal so the league that we're going to is Portugal we are joining Sporting Lisbon we're not being offered quite as much money as we had at Napoli but at this stage it's just about winning big competitions we want to get the best CV possible before the end of the save now part of the reason I've chosen them is they've got a bit of money to play with so we'll be able to give our director of football a budget they've got some fantastic players at the club already they've got some wonder kids a bit younger down look at this left winger from Israel for example a 19 year old and he's absolutely sensational a world-class wonder kid and as good as any of the wingers we've had at Napoli in the last year or at Newcastle the season before that there's lots of other good players who are in their peak they're all in that sort of 26 to 30 bracket not too many of them are wanted so I'm hoping we'll be able to keep hold of the squad and make one or two additions that will just set us apart from Porto and Benfica so one of the things I had to do in this series and I ask you to do the same because I know it's very hard not to is I was thinking about France and Portugal as they are in real life which aren't the most competitive leagues there are two or three teams at the top and the rest are all very similar in France obviously it's a one horse race most years and over in Portugal it's normally a two horse race with one of the three teams in a crisis but in this series, both of these leagues have become very exciting. So if we look at the Portuguese league, Sporting Benfica and Porto have been right up there for years. Benfica have taken over from Porto in the last couple. Sporting Lisbon haven't won it in ages, but they've been second to both of these teams. So it's always been Benfica in first or third and Porto in first or third. And then Sporting have tended to separate them. And you can see there's only four points between the three sides this year. It's a really even division. And that's something I'm looking forward to managing in. The same 
game in France, to be honest, where PSG, Lille and Lyon are all brilliant sides and it's become quite close at the top of the league with Monaco competing there as well. So we are going to go and accept this offer from Sporting and then we'll go and meet the squad in a minute. Just to see in a bit more detail who our director of football is going to be, you can already see the name there and any Newcastle fans among you, we're getting a lot of Newcastle links in this series as well as managing him for a few years. We've now got Hugo Viana as our director of football who had a slightly disappointing spell there as a player about a decade and a half ago. But let's go and accept this offer. We're just going to try and bump it up to 32,000. I'm not worried about getting a longer deal. They've only offered us 12 months and to be honest we're absolutely happy with that because it means it's it's easier for us to get away as long as we get the job done this season. Most important is the domestic title and then if we can win a cup competition as well that would be absolutely fantastic. But we've accepted the job offer, we got them up to 30 grand a week and we'll be back in a moment for our first day at Sport in Lisbon. Okay then, we are officially Sporting Lisbon manager. We're replacing Bratislav Zivkovic. I'm not quite sure how he did there. He's a pretty decent manager. He's gone to Napoli. We've just swapped jobs. What a surprise that was. I wasn't expecting that one. So Zivkovic has gone to Napoli. We've swapped places and gone to Sporting. Both managers just needed a change of scenery. And it shows that the clubs are at pretty similar levels. If both managers can just switch between the clubs. We're both happy to do so. And I think that's going to be a good move for both teams. And for both men in the Dugouts. We finished second in the league last season, so hopefully we'll be able to go one better this time. We've got one player who's unhappy. Ronald wants first team football. He doesn't look particularly good, and it is the same position as that brilliant Israeli wonder kid. He doesn't look as good as him, so that's not something I'm going to be able to promise. We've got our first interview at the club, which we'll deal with in a moment. We'll attend the meeting, we'll just say the usual answers. We want to learn more about the club, we'll do the press conference, and all of that stuff to keep the board happy. We've got some transfer for obligations coming up as well. Michelle is joining us from Arsenal for £20 million, so I suppose we better look at him as he's a big sign-in. Is he on loan here at the moment? A Brazilian centre-half at 25 years of age, and he's pretty solid across the board in fairness, so he's someone that will be good at this level, and hopefully he'll be able to take us to the title. Did that say he had a long throw? No, it said he refrains from taking long shots. I almost got excited there. I thought we had a Rory de Lapp on our hands. An injury update which shows one of the youngsters out for four months our goalkeeper's got a recurring injury that's a little bit of a concern maybe our director of football will do something about that but to my knowledge he was one of the best players at the club four star ability four star potential he is absolutely fantastic and we might just have to put up with that he is on 95 grand a week though very expensive for a goalkeeper at this level so the two things we're going to meet in this episode obviously is our staffing. We want to come and have a look at the key men. Have we got all three in post is the important question. Let's start with the head of youth development. Probably the least important of the three in a journeyman series as although they're responsible for the youth intakes it's not going to make a huge difference going forward as we're only going to be at these clubs for a year or two. So he's good at working with youngsters, good for judging player ability and potential, excellent fitness and tactical coach, very determined a resolute personality. Although he's close to retirement age he's absolutely brilliant at everything else in terms of our assistant manager Vitor Severino about the same wage but not quite as good a coach He's got decent judgment of player ability and potential, very good mental stats and he's got a fairly determined character but he's not a good coach and that's something that might be important later in the year. If we can get lots of good coaches in then it doesn't matter so much but I can only see one senior first team coach as well as a few fitness coaches and goalkeeping coaches. So that's something hopefully our director of football will address. We know that man is Hugo Viana and he hasn't got the best attributes in the world, really not that good at all to be honest. It looks like he's just got this job based on who he is. He was there in real life from 2018, so the start of the season where this career began, and he's still there now, 13 years on. He's got good player ability and potential judgment, but everything else is pretty average, and I don't know that he's going to be the superstar we need. But we'll give him the summer to see what he can do. We're not going to make those judgments too early on. Of course, we have no say in it. Our chairman decides our director of football, so it's going to be interesting to see how that unfolds. I'm not convinced by Viana, but obviously we haven't got a choice, and he's just for a year so we're going to have to get on with it and then if we move on to the squad I'm just going to go very quickly and get rid of all the low star players there's a few youngsters in the squad who shouldn't be here and we'll go and look at our first team squad in a moment 
Okay, I've got rid of all of the youngsters, so we've got a slightly smaller squad now. The one thing I will say in the under-23s, we'll go and look very quickly. There's a lot of high-potential players there. A couple of wonder kids, a right-back and a striker, and a few others who are going to be good professional pros. So there's plenty of good signs there. We've obviously got that young left-winger from Israel, who is going to be absolutely world-class. We've got a striker who's also a wonder kid. He could potentially reach the top level. So there are plenty of promising players here, but obviously we've got to worry about the hero now we've already met the goalkeeper he's the only one good enough for the first team in the squad so maybe our director of football shouldn't sell him as we don't have many other options at present there's not many really good standout defenders plenty of solid players in this squad but not really many standout stars probably what you'd expect at this level just one or two players that stand out from the rest we've met Michelle who's coming in at center half alongside him with a better star rating is Diogo Pakshao He's 27 years old, three and a half star ability, four star potential. Again, a left footer. We've got so many left sided centre halves. Not quite sure what the reasoning for that is. Plenty of experience in Italy and played for Celtic before us. Not the best in the air. A jumping reach of six for a centre half. That's pretty embarrassing. He's only five foot ten. Looks like he might even be a better left back, but he's done a decent job for them this season. So he'll probably be our first choice going into next year. Very good mentally, very good physically. Just can't jump or head the ball. There's no other real standouts in defence, so we move on to midfield. Edin Tesanovic, he's a three and a half star central midfielder, just 21 years of age, the Bosnian. Three and a half star ability, four star potential, again a left footer, plays as a playmaker or a Mazala, two roles we've used in both of our series this year, and he just looks a really solid player across the board, and he's obviously got potential to improve a bit more. Sporting by far the biggest club he's played for, and he's also got 30 caps for Bosnia. In the league this season, he's got 10 assists and 4 goals so that does bode well for him as a playmaker he's already highly influential at 21 and he could be a key player in the next couple of years then on to the more advanced positions, we've got a few more standout ones at this area of the pitch, and one of them's an experienced man, Bernardo Souza, 30 years of age and attacking number 10, a really good player, three and a half star ability and potential, again left footed, all of the best players are at this club, really good player technically, mentally he's got all the attributes we need, and he's okay physically, not bad for a 30 year old, no caps for Portugal, but he was an under 21 international, and I presume he's a club legend now, a team leader with two. 149 league appearances so his first one for us will be his 250th i'm really pleased that he's at the club hopefully he's going to be an important part of our plans again 12 assists last season so another good playmaker to have in midfield then on the left wing we've got the young israeli shay ben harush a four star ability player with five star potential i know we've met him already but we cannot lose this guy a season of football nine goals and three assists he's been absolutely brilliant for the club and it looks like he's going to be our most important player next year so we've really got to try and keep hold of him and make sure we nurture him into a world-class star he will make the club a huge profit if he stays i've just got to see how long his contract was he's got five years remaining so he should be able to keep him fingers crossed that'll all work out for us and then we've got two strikers with three and a half star ability so we might have to think about a different shape next year the first of them is david rivera but it does look like he's wanted by chelsea so it's going to be very hard for us to keep him in that case Yet another left footer can play anywhere behind the strikers as well. Nearly 70 caps for Chile, over 1 in 2 goals for Sporting in 116 appearances. Did the same for Celta Vigo as well and made one appearance for Manchester City. So a good player across the board, not the best personality, but all of his attributes are fantastic and he's good as a pressing forward and an advanced forward. Two of the roles I like to use most. And then the other one is Robin Dierkes. He's a 3.5 star centre forward as well. Another advanced forward this time an Austrian international, played loads for Austria Vienna before joining Sporting a couple of years ago. He's not the best finisher in the world, but everything else is very good. Physically and mentally, he's fantastic. So another good striker to have up there. This guy's either footed, so again, another good left footer, but at least this one can use his right too. That wonder kid was right footed, I think, so he might have a bit of balance to the squad, but I'm not quite sure what formation we're going to play, as it doesn't seem to be a well-mixed squad with plenty of good attacking players and not a great deal at the back.
What that does mean is we're going to have a very busy summer. The first game the club's going to have next season is going to be the Super Cup final. So we are going to get to compete for a trophy in our first game, but I'm sure there'll be a few signings and sales before there. Clubs in Portugal and France, one of the differences are they do often have to sell to the biggest leagues, although we've got a much more competitive league now. I'd imagine that will still be the case. It may well be the last stop of our career, depending on how things go here, and it more depends on what job we can get after this. I'm not prepared to drop below the top six ranked leagues they're well ahead of the rest in terms of coefficient so with the clubs we've already managed at and in the countries we've already succeeded after Portugal that will only be France Germany and Spain so if we can't get a job in one of those leagues or one of the massive international powerhouses we will call it a day after this spell at Sporting Lisbon with our head held high after a fantastic career but I'm really looking forward to this season I'm particularly looking forward to seeing that Israeli winger and I'm interested to see what Hugo Viana does as there seems to be a bit of money to manoeuvre in the transfer window. There's 20 million available there. Loads of sell-on clauses to go to. So we'll have a look through them and get rid of them if we can. And hopefully that'll put the budget up to 30 or 40. I know it doesn't seem a great deal, only 20 million remaining, but don't forget they've already pre-agreed a deal for 20 million pound, and there's a few players wanted in the squad as well, so I'm sure they'll get sold on, and that'll increase our budget yet further. If we look at the club to see what they've been winning, obviously we saw they haven't won the league since the start of this series, but have they won any of the cup competitions? The Portuguese Premier League hasn't been since 2002, but in terms of the Portuguese Cup, they won it two years on the bounce, including this season, so that's why they're in the Super Cup final next year and it's a tradition we'd like to continue next season they've been in the final each of the last five years so at the very least we want to do that the Portuguese League Cup was won three years ago again a competition I'd like to win and in the Super Taka which is essentially the Super Cup they won it last season and we'll try and do the same again this year if we look at the league table, we'll know who we're playing in the final of that. It will be Benfica, who pipped them by three points last season, but hopefully we'll be able to get the better of them on a one-off day and lift the trophy in our first game at the club. So certainly an interesting move, a league I've never really managed in in all my time playing football manager. Since FM05, I've never done a full season in Portugal, I don't think. So I'm really excited for this one, and I hope it goes as well as it did at Napoli, as that would be a brilliant way to continue the series, and really continue this brilliant experience where we get into managing lots of different leagues. A brand new one for me, so it might take a little time to adapt, but we've got a world-class wonder kid, and hopefully we'll have a couple of new signings by the time the next episode starts with us. Super Cup. So that's the competition we've got to try and win in our next episode. We've obviously got four other competitions during the season. The club did qualify for the Champions League with Porto missing out for the Europa League this season. So we're in the big one and hopefully we can do well in that. I'd like to sneak through the group stages if possible. The board expects us to win the league next season. So it is essentially win or bust in a very tight division in a three horse race. Which one of the three will come out on top? The league hasn't clicked over yet so we can't have a look at the media predictions but we will of course do that in the next episode Then, if we can win one of the domestic cups as well that would be absolutely fantastic but of course it's going to be very difficult to compete on all of these fronts when we've got a very young backup team with lots of homegrown youngsters at the club it's a proud tradition that we want to continue but obviously we can't do that at the expense of missing out on all the competitions but if you did enjoy this episode and our brand new club please do put a thumbs up on the video let me know what you think of the move for Portugal it is one of the top six leagues leagues in Europe they're all very tightly bunched together and it was just a bit of an unfortunate summer really when none of the jobs in Spain and Germany became available Leipzig turned us down and that was the only one of the big six from both leagues obviously as Lille won the Champions League and Ligue 1 they are not going to lose their manager so we might have to wait a little while for that one but we're all focused on sport in Lisbon now a chance to win four domestic competitions and most importantly the league title in a really tight and competitive league is somewhere I'm really looking forward to managing. Let me know in the comments what you think Hugo Viana should do. Obviously a backup goalkeeper is a must. I really think we need to improve the defence but I'm not sure if he's going to be able to do it as there seems to be a decent number of players there so it will depend on who he sells. There's not many that are really good enough to be transfer listed. So unless we start getting offers which our director of football deemed to be acceptable we're probably not going to have a big overhaul this summer and it's just going to be a very competitive league with three closely matched teams fighting it out to the very end for the title. 
Subscribe to the channel for daily FM19 content from my two long-term stories. This one, the head coach, where we'll be back on Wednesday with our first game from our brand new club. And it's a chance to win a competition as well, with the Portuguese Super Cup up for grabs. We'll be playing one of our title rivals, Benfica, who obviously lifted the Portuguese Premier League last year. So it should be a closely fought match and hopefully it'll be a good sign of things to come for the season. There's also my one club series, part of the furniture with Torquay United. With two episodes into season 14 of that one, we had our transfer special last Thursday and then our first game of the season on Sunday. So do go back and check those out if you haven't already. There's a link in the eye above to the first episode of the season. So fingers crossed you'll enjoy that one as much as I'm enjoying managing Torquay. There's also three episodes a week from Cricket 19, the official game of the Ashes. We started our brand new career series on Saturday at midday, and then we've got episodes every Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday long term, as we look to emulate Alistair Cook at the top of the England innings as a left arm opening batsman. We also did a 10 part Ashes test playthrough in that one as well. I really enjoyed that over the last few weeks, and a massive thanks to all of you that went and watched that one too. There's also weekly content from my Snooker 19 career every Friday at 4.30. But a massive thanks for watching this one and your continued support with the series. And I hope to see you next time for our first game at Sporting Lisbon as we try to win our first trophy in the Portuguese Super Cup.